Welcome, Chuggalos, to day 11 of the Brew Crew Podcast Advent Calendar Spectacular. I'm not going to bury the lead. I'm finally joined with who actually carries the humor in this podcast, Chuggalo Mike. Chuggalo Mike, say hello to the people. Hello, people. I am definitely uh, not, but thank you. <laughs> we are, I've been we are, gone for a while, and I, and I messed up a few of my, my check-ins, so I'm glad I, to be back on the train. I, pur- I purposely didn't pre-produce this. What beers did you bring? What beers did you have? And were you out of order? Did you bring, what did you bring that you shouldn't have? Tell us about your journey. Well, I, I, I brought three of them. I still have your advent calendar spectacular list here. So I brought the Brink, but I brought day 22, which was hold the reins. So I have that locked and loaded for 22. So I will not be you know, enjoying that then. But uh, so I had Nightbringer last night because so uh, you know I was kind of confused. There was two breaks, so yeah, uh, I, I didn't get that one. I brought the Esoteric, which was you know that had coffee in it, so you know you know, I, you know where I stand on those. And then right. uh, the North High, which was which was okay. And then I did not bring the Butcher and the Brewer, the Frog and the Hog, because that was a glass bottle, and I was scared it would get all over my suits. So um, that's smart. But but I did end up. I brought three of them. One was the wrong one, so I, I had two of them, but. You know, as as you do with your when you're out on work trips, we were you know out drinking um, at the bar, so uh, I didn't get a chance to 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 like you know get them um, on in a timely fashion. The, the interesting thing is, so you told me that you had an English mild, and I was like, uh, he just drank it out of order because I knew that the Branch and Bone was an English beer. I didn't know that there's also gotcha. an English mild in in the calendar. So that's that's. Till just now, so that's why I was confused. I was foreshadowing. Like, now you know, day twenty-two. <laughs> it's coming. I'm uh, the phone's blowing up because uh, I'm. We're going to be the last ones to have this beer today. Chuglo Stev has already had it, oh. and Chuglo JT. Uh, really odd for him. Um, in the Hobbit, they always talk about a wizard is always on time. Uh, JT has no concept of time. So that's why I was surprised, and I think he made a quip about like, oh, maybe we'll drink this before uh, Matt does. Chuggalo Mike actually asked me to drink this last night at midnight. I made it about 10 minutes to midnight, and he requested like 20 minutes before midnight. I was like, I'm not going to make it another 10 minutes. So we were going to have another midnight beer. If you look on YouTube, that video that we did, the midnight beer, is the most viewed out of the videos that we've done, and it's not close. <laughs> I went back and looked at that. That was, that was pretty decent. Out. Yeah, I don't know if the word's getting out that I'm just turning the volume up a little bit. That that one was just uh, prime B for what the deal was. Well, I mean, you were dressed as an elf, so I mean, I think that you know, up the count a bit. I tried to bring the funny. I'm also trying to bring you know coordinated, uh, um, you know, rags and uh, t-shirts, but we'll get there. Uh, we'll get that, there. Maybe. That, that is impressive. I like the I like the coordination. I'm, I'm trying to, but well, let's get to the beer. So we're here because of the beer today. We're drinking Captain Stardust Saison, and it's from Yellow Springs. This is a Saison or a farmhouse ale. Again, you can see the dents from my can when it fell out. Um, this rings in at 6.5%. Uh, again, we're we're in the we're in we're in a lull, and uh, it's all beer, uh, but we'll get to that. Let's go with the crack because I need to wet my palate. Is your can primed? Let's do it. Three, two, one. Perfect. Sheath, sheath my can because I don't talk to talk about can or boner. Uh, that's uh, JT's gimmick. I, I heard your uh, your shtick about that. You're like, nope, it's still your shtick. I, I agree. He 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 got he uh, he posted that on our um, on our Facebook page, uh, the Brew Crew Podcast, and uh, he was very uh, adamant about everyone can use it. It's not my deal. I, sure, I don't know how to speak about art. It looks all right, but so, we'll leave that for so, so everyone's curious about my thoughts. I, I've checked into this beer. I've had this beer multiple times. The first time I checked into this beer was 2015, and uh, you can find me on Untapped. That's why these individuals are asking, like, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? They're all friends of mine on Untapped. They could just go and, you know, the information is there. It's like when somebody asks you a piece of information, and they're like, um, uh, you know, and they could easily Google it. Let me Google that for you. That's that's, yeah. that's funny. I uh, I actually do that to Mike all the time. I, I I ask him questions, and so it's funny, and that's why I bring it up. It's not to throw shade at others because I do it to Mike all the time in our entire that's life. True. 
even pre-Google. Um, so I, I'm just going to give, because JT, check out his videos. They're a riot with Chuggalo Spill. Um, he gives you a little more of an idea. So uh, a Saison or a farmhouse ale uh, historically was made by farmers during the off season. So it was bottle conditioned. It was something that they just let the elements handle all the conditioning in. That's why you have the unique profile as opposed to like a lager, which you put in a cellar or a really cool area. This doesn't have mm -hmm. that advent advantage. Also the ingredients. So this comes from Northern France and Belgium. So you're going to get more of that like vit character, more of the um, more of as JT alluded to, not spiciness, but spice. Yep, that's uh, essentially what I think of when I think of a Saison is, you know, they had some spices laying around in their farm. They threw them in yep. with it just to give it some flavor. And right. that's where we're at. <clears throat> yeah, like a, like an orange peel or zest. But again, if you know those areas of the world, orange isn't indigenous there. But that's kind of like the zest that you get. So it's a zesty type of beer uh, without being off-putting as long as you're OK with that. So about my personal history, I uh, in 2015, again, when I was coming into craft beer more and more and spending a little bit more money, um, I hated this beer. Uh, in 2017 at um, Dayton Ale Fest, when I was uh, drinking with uh, much more beer inclined individuals, they had a cask aged Captain Stardust that was my beer of the year. So, so that's, you have several check ins to this then. I, styles. I think I did the cask aged one and we went back multiple times and, you know, so there's 130 beers available and I had 60 of them. I went back like four or five times, like we cashed their keg there. The, That's impressive. I don't know what they did with the cask, but that conditioning just muted the zest and increase the potency of it like the abv was like around 11 i'll have to check to see if i had it but um uh or if i checked in because there was a a, a couple years there um where i wasn't checking in stuff but but anyway that, it, it was something that i you know really wanted and of course they have different years of it but what are your thoughts i've been True, true. Um, like I said, um, in this pretty standard, like I have actually, it's kind of funny, the the glass I have chosen, since you guys don't like glasses on the pod, I like to yeah. pour them in a the glass. Um, I got this at Dave's Brew Farm, and they had a lot of Saisons there. It kind of reminds me of that. It's just uh, your standard, you know, uh, pretty low spice, um, but this one's, uh, you know, middle of the road for me. I would give yeah. it, probably, like I said, uh, you know, if I would have rated it a few years ago, it was probably been a two. Now today, I think, you know, I'll give it a 3.0. Um, so the the one, so just generic capped, um, generic, I should have brought this up before because it's not great pod. But um, so I had one that was infused with fortune cookie and uh, um, I gave that a, a 4.0 and I know it's kind of cheating to look this stuff up, but if I mean, if I'm going to be doing so, so not, you're, you're going to tell, tell us your history of this beer here. Yeah, so I'm trying to find the cask because they've done. So that was a cask with a sea salt and caramel and I rated it highly. I'm intrigued with um, I would love caramel and sea salt and most anything, but I'm intrigued about this fortune cookie one. I kind of want it now. And, and and that was a year after. So 2015 was the first time I had it. 2016, I can't find the cast. Uh, I know my comments are somewhere in my beer folder or whatever. But um, uh, and I turned off JT's video before I got to the scores because again, I I never want to be. Right. Um, yeah, you don't want to be swayed. Yeah, I, this is fine. Um, off the top rope, I'm gonna give this a three two five. It's it's fine. I, I guess I'm discovering going through some of these doldrums. I didn't I didn't see did you check in I'm really curious um I didn't check people's check-ins what you thought of the home from the moon because English bitters isn't something that you and I have often like in our stock we don't search for them nothing right and there's not too many out there to be had to begin with so um I I was quite surprised just like you I don't think I gave it that high marks just because it's a it was a beer but like that was a, a solid beer I, I really like the hung from the moon yeah, if, if you're going to have like a solid, and I think that's something we're discovering and we're going to have to talk about this next year, like when, you know, we build it and the instructions we give people. Um, that That's what I want from a calendar, not, you know, like the, 
this is a standard like for you being outside of the area this this is a new but this is this is exactly like, this exactly. is like you know for us around here i noticed um, it was from ohio that's why you probably had it so many times i was like i've never seen this in my life yeah so yellow yellow springs is a very avant-garde um town um most of the shops there don't even accept plastic um it's like a cash or check only it's a really interesting enclave of um hippies and uh like i said just artists and free thinkers it's really often it's 20 minutes from my house um just a small small community Very but cool. um again they do a lot this is like their basis this this and boat show would be their flagships um they do a lot with both of them you know like i said you know the 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 cask strength one that i had you know the cask ale with sea salt um this this might have been um, I'm looking at the date, the 27th. This might have been my um, uh, ale fest. So I thought it was 2017. Oh. It was 2016. So this is this was my beer of the year. Which what uh, cask ale was sold? What are your thoughts on casks? Uh, we used to have a bar here at 40 taps. Um, 39 and 30 and 40 were both the casks, and uh, it always there there wasn't a lot of carbonation. You know, it was kind of you know more boozy. Um. I, I, I like them. I, you know, we, we, you, me and Ryan, we talk all the time, you know, um, about <laughs> we're spending, like we send pictures back and forth with all these big beers and stuff that we spend. Um, a lot of that stuff, if you can get it, um, it's highly sought after. I cask for me means expensive, but I have no problem buying a cask beer. Like, yeah, they're just more rare. Yeah. It's like um, beers like an Oak Folders, like you and I, we would drink um, the brewery, the brewery beers. Remember the bombers that we would yep. drink? Yep. yep. A lot of a lot sours. Of they, they like the, they throw the sours out there. Oak, Oak, are... Oak, Oak Folders and casks and everything. Yep. Um, but again, like, you know, the interactions and everything, it's all about conversation. So again, I, I like bringing beer back to both you guys, but this is just... Uh, another way to expand and i know you've had people reach out to you and they're like hey we're hit. and you you've put there's only five or six of these calendars in the wild next year i think this is going to explode a lot of people are interested in that. yeah if, if we uh, if we put it out there like a month ahead of time before december i think we're going to get a lot of response for this so i think people yeah. are are very interested and in, in entertained by our videos maybe and and we're not so we're day 11 um we're going to be I'm going to be doing uh, at least one, um, possibly two episodes live with Mikey here in a couple of weeks. Um, but I think there's a lot of notes to be done. And I say that, you know, we're almost halfway through. There's a lot of notes, a lot of development. Like one idea I'm spitballing back and forth in my mind is, you know, we have uh, a knowledgeable beer individual in Wisconsin. We have us in Ohio. Buy 12 from each place and then mix and match. I mean, there's, I like that. that. We could do the double state thing, you know, that that would take some doings. But there's easier ways to bridge it. And then that way, you know, because we can get where listeners are and exchange calendars. I mean, it, it it would take some coordination, but I think the 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 juice is worth the squeeze. We just need to we just need to plan it out. I, I really like that idea. I, I, you haven't thrown that one out yet to me at least. So twelve for each each area and then we mix them you know that'd be that'd be pretty cool right and then uh you know again we have a list and we kind of cheat a little bit but to conversation it, it's just the only way to do it you know is to just make a list send it out to people and let them know what they're going to drink or whatever so yeah i i have looked ahead obviously we know that 14 is going to be uh, uh we're just really looking forward to it i went and bought some beer yesterday from my local and I was talking to Pat and uh, I go, hey, we've got an Alesmith Decadence. He goes, oh, that's cool. And I go, it's from 2011. He goes, geez, Louise. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, and I'm looking at it and that's draft. So they had that in the keg for 10 years. That's yeah, insane. It, we we went, when we went to Barrel House and uh, we were, when we were building this, they're like, yeah, we just happened to find it somewhere in the back. So I'm just like, you know, it's in like their wow. room or whatever. And it just happened to, and it wasn't even a full keg either. So interesting just, okay well and, and then uh, like we talk about chuggalo seth once in a while and uh, he he's brought some stuff that has aged a little bit too long so i'm hoping that's not the case but uh, i guess we'll find out on the 
the Tuesday. I, I'm I'm sitting on a uh, on a beer that I want to take up north. Uh, th- that Chuggalo Stev gave me from Crooked Handle, which you and I went there, mm-hmm. um, and we we talked to the owner. We talked to Jason, and uh, Jason's been on the podcast before. And Jason goes, "That's the last bottle in existence." And he goes, "I don't even know what year it was. Like, it was either one or the other." All right. So okay. I, I I totally forgot to bring it up. Like, you know, it's just in the back of my cellar, and uh, okay. I should I sh- brought it up. But it and Jason even goes, "It could be great," and it goes, "It could be yeah. like yeah. you know a total." Also, I think I think yeah, you know, it, it says it's a barley wine, so I'm hoping that uh, you know it oh, yeah. those, those can age for quite a while. This this is going to be I mean ten years on a barley wine that's going to be oh, that's going to be primed butter. God. Perfect, perfect. All right, uh, I'm looking forward to Tuesday. Out of beer, but uh, I think I think this was a rich and meaty episode. Excellent, excellent. Well, good uh, to have have you uh, have me again. And... Yeah, uh, no, uh, we'll do this again tomorrow. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'll do it again here in about ten. Like hours. ten hours? Yeah, that, I was gonna say that. Uh, um, if you're still up, I'm I'm in. It, it, it could be, but um, thanks, uh, thanks, Chuggles, and uh, cheers. Have a good rest of your day.